Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for today's webinar. The subject of today's tutorial and training session is going to be on business continuity and business resilience and today we're joined by Andrew Stiles, uh, Nobby Stiles to his friends, the Managing Director of Business Risk and Management Proprietary Limited. Uh, Andrew comes to us with significant experience in uh, government law enforcement as well as significant experience across the Asia Pacific and other parts of the world with business risk management and certainly business continuity. Now Andrew I know I've probably understated uh, your experience and skill set. Uh, thanks for joining us. Do you want to give us a little bit about yourself? Yeah thanks Tony. Uh, my background uh, is predominantly in security and business continuity. Most of my formal background in relation to business continuity was was the result of looking after business continuity crisis management at Hewlett Packard for the, uh, this was in HP were manufacturing about 70 plus billion dollars of product a year and the importance of getting that product um, it, uh, out from the uh, manufacturer uh, uh, logistically and also um, through the uh, various uh, regional hubs uh, out to the end user was absolutely imperative to HP in terms of cash flow and so it was uh, absolutely critical that there were contingency plans in place to ensure that if there were dis there was disruption, that it uh, would be um, minimised, and so I come from that kind of environment. Okay, excellent. Well, you've certainly kicked us off on the right note, and you've given us a, a specific example of what exactly is this elusive business continuity because as we know there's so many definitions and references and legislations and just plain old interpretation so on that vein you know, and you've given us a, a commercially relevant example to begin with but in your perspective and based on your experience what do you think business continuity is or, wh or what should it be? Yeah I think Basically, what you said a moment ago, Tony, and what I mentioned a moment ago too, is basically about minimising disruption. It's uh, uh, if you look at the situation currently in Egypt, for example, where there is an enormous amount of civil unrest, uh, re relatively peacefully, but still civil unrest. This impacts business, and uh, if we look at Asia. Uh, you know, Thailand is a, another classic example of that, and potentially Thailand could go down the same path as Egypt in terms of civil unrest. The the issue is, do companies have plans in place to minimise the level of disruption that will be caused by these types of events? I mentioned civil unrest, but it could be any type of event. It could be the tsunami. It could be uh, power outages. It could be anything like that. And if you look at it, most companies. Uh, uh, traditionally don't plan for what could happen. Uh, they tend to uh, sort of stick their head in the sand and say, look, it probably isn't going to happen to us. But fundamentally it's about minimising disruption. Okay. And obviously uh, uh, you know, crisis management goes hand in glove with business continuity um, in terms of the containment management and ongoing process. And, and we hear a lot about continuity and resilience but it really comes down to the commercial imperative or, or why should companies be developing business continuity plans in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you look at the research that's been done, companies that go through a crisis that don't have plans in place typically do not handle the crisis as well. Uh, and some of the research that's come out suggests that very high percentages of companies do not survive two years two years post crisis that do not have contingency plans in place so it might just sim it might just be a matter of simply having uh, a line of credit available if there's a crisis so having a line of credit to a company av available uh, so that if uh, something like an Egypt or Thailand situation occurred a company can into that and survive. Uh, you know, it it, uh, it might be ensuring that more than one staff member has has knowledge regarding 
providing something that is critical to the functioning of the company, if that staff member leaves, then there is a, a contingency plan in place. So that's that's why you know it's absolutely imperative that companies have contingency plans. It sounds like a fairly compelling reason, and certainly com commercial imperative as to why they should be doing it. But we both know it's not universal. We know that it's not a hundred percent. Um, you know, why do you think companies are sometimes reluctant to implement um, or even conduct the planning for business continuity? Yeah, I think if you if you look at why companies don't implement business continuity, there's a certain uh, basically business continuity is preparing for something that may never happen. Typically though, we see that most companies at some stage get affected by some kind of crisis. But a lot of companies live by this motto that, you know, we'll deal with the crisis when it occurs. And this is a very narrow-minded, short-sighted view of management because fundamentally business continuity is good management. And it's basically, like if I could use the uh, example, you know, if a crisis occurred, it would be like trying to learn how to swim while you're drowning. It just doesn't work. And so companies uh, such as uh, BP, for example, with their uh, with the uh, Gulf of Mexico oil platform uh, disaster that occurred, you know, was a good example of where companies don't have good, good contingency plans and crisis management in place. Uh, it tends to impact them much harder and particularly impact the business name and also the uh, the effect uh, of, of the negative effects on the community around them. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why. Uh, in Thailand, for example, it could be a cultural reason. Uh, Thailand uh, basically is a Buddhist country. Uh, Buddhist uh, religion basically uh, looks at the moment it doesn't necessarily look at the past and it doesn't necessarily look at the future it's more concerned with the moment and so there are certain cultural impediments there as well with countries like Thailand in terms of getting people to look at the future and what potentially could happen um, and I guess you know business continuity is fundamentally about risk management and companies that don't engage in good risk management don't identify possible threats and then don't measure those threats in terms of likelihood uh, and impact on the organisation. Um, so, you know, having good, uh, good risk management um, helps the company to align its resources in terms of what potentially could happen. Uh, not not uh, developing a good risk management plan could um, you know severely impact the company in terms of leaving it vulnerable. Okay. Well, and, and obviously you know, in terms of interchangeable titles and definitions and so on, we've we've touched and spoken about business continuity and crisis management, but really, what's the difference? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, a lot of people get confused, but basically business continuity is the overall overarching uh, term that covers uh, all aspects of contingency planning. Crisis management is a component of the business continuity and it's more concerned, uh, concerned with management's role in minimising disruption and in terms of minimising damage control to the company. So, uh, for example, BP was a good example again of this, where uh, the CEO, uh, Tony Haywood, admitted that they had no crisis management plan in place when the disaster occurred, which meant that there were a series of faux pas and poor PR management, which led to a severe impact on the company's good name and the goodwill of the company. Uh, as Warren Buffett said, it takes 20 years to build up a reputation. It takes five years, five minutes to ruin it. Um, you know, good crisis management is about managing the situation uh, when it occurs and managing, you know, best for the company. Yes, I certainly know that plenty of uh, scoping or plans and clients get the two confused. They insist upon a crisis process without, as you said, the overarching support of business continuity. And, and we both know that that's prone to fail because it's the tactics without the strategy. So, you know, 
handing, you know, continuing on from that, why should companies be concerned about having crisis management plans? You've given some some excellent examples and certainly some very topical yeah, issues. It's a good... Why why should they be concerned if they don't, and and what they should they be doing? Yeah, good question, Tony. Uh, crisis management basically provides a framework for companies to respond to a crisis. We all know what it's like when we're under pressure. Typically, we don't think straight. We don't think logically. We tend to rush things. And it's the same when a company is uh, affected by a crisis. Uh, where companies don't have good crisis management plans in place, Sometimes it's unclear about what the roles and responsibilities are of certain people. Uh, you know what the processes are that should be followed. Having a plan in place before the crisis occurs allows people to have clear guidelines on how they need to be more effective management of a crisis. Okay. And as you said, you know, it's, it's always better to be running off a plan or something prepared in advance because business is, as we know, dynamic. It's, you could be in the middle of something, something that was commercially important and, and your mind's just simply not there and a plan makes it a whole lot easier. Um, when it comes Correct. to, you know, crisis and, and there's emergency and incident and so on, um, how, how does emergency management, you know, relate directly to the, the business continuity itself? Yeah, emergency management is the first step that a company might take if there's a if there's a crisis. Typically, emergency management.